My mission upon this channel is to provide details regarding ancient ruins, artifacts, and technologies that clearly demonstrate that there once existed lost, ancient, advanced civilizations that have been lost here upon our planet. My unwavering research dynamic is that said subject matter is crucially factual. Thus, it is always based upon that which I have personally sought to confirm as undeniable realities before sharing. I do not only offer an intellectual armory for you, the viewer, who is often confronted with many academic fallacies, but particularly the younger viewer, enabling their empowerment to correct academics, often ordered to pass on such fallacies through a permitted curriculum. As such, I feel that it is crucial that not only are the facts I share established proofs, but that features which they explain away as others work are established as beyond doubt as currently unexplainable, as such undeniable as the work of others. Exposing academia's lies due to our ancestors' limitations, ancestors often claimed as the constructors of said ruins found throughout the world. Due to this bestowed responsibility to only convey historical accuracies, established mystery, and ancestral limitations. Many independent researchers often privately contact me via my secure armored email, often sharing not only their own controversial research, sometimes including their own expedition details, but also academics in positions of tremendous public influence, who not only share my view that much of the history currently being taught to future generations is not only inaccurate, but is based upon a conspiracy of concealing past civilizations. One such email received recently pertained to something known as the moon shaft. However, although this is not the main theme of this particular video, I will briefly cover what has been shared with me, and after further research, endeavor to do a detailed video in the future regarding said explorations if enough evidence of its existence can be established. Sent to me by Mike Collins, a member of an unsuccessful expedition to try to rediscover this mysterious lair, a brief prologue is as follows, quote, Three soldiers hiding from the Germans in the Tatra Mountains in Slovakia discovered a lair which could possibly be the oldest man-made structure in the world. The structure is believed to be between 300 and 310 million years old by a number of individuals, with Heinrich Himmler even sending several scientific expeditions into the Tatra Mountains looking for the shaft, with members of the KGB also attempting to obtain the diary writings on the experience from these deceased soldiers. End quote. Although compelling, I am reluctant to cover this story yet due to a lack of any physical evidence, regardless of the considerable lengthy testimonies that pertain to its existence, I intend to invest some time in researching it further myself first. However, tonight's subject originates far away from the supposed moon shaft in China. Ancient star maps of such accuracy and range that due to currently attested academic understandings of the history, they simply should not have possessed such knowledge, let alone been able to accurately illustrate it upon parchment, known as the Dunhua star chart. The chart is the first accurate graphical representation of star locations within ancient Chinese astronomy, and it is of nearly every star across the atlas. According to modern academia, it is dated to the Tang dynasty between 618 and 907. Although I feel this is actually a copy of charts of a far earlier age, and thus of a far earlier, far more capable civilization. Before this map, much of the star information mentioned in historical Chinese texts was drastically inaccurate. However, this map provides a graphically precise verification of star observations and are part of a series of charts all known as the Dunhua manuscripts. It seems, however, in an attempt to quell the curiosity of the astute among us, considerable funding has been funneled into constructing an excuse for its existence. This funded project is known as the International Dunhua Project, with much of the research and indeed exclusive access to the maps solely granted to these academics, which I believe is an attempt to convolute their importance. However, regardless of these tremendous efforts, 
there are many features of the map which remain unexplainable. Compelling evidence of them being Chinese copies of knowledge left over by a past, vastly more advanced civilization. Copies of elusive manuscripts that at some point within Chinese antiquity were most probably found preserved somewhere. First, the Dunhua star map is to date the world's oldest complete preserved star atlas. Meaning that before the ancient Chinese were even a seafaring civilization, they somehow had access to knowledge of the accurately plotted star charts of both hemispheres. Additionally, the main image, which many presume is the entire Dunhua star chart, an insinuation implied by Wikipedia, is only a small fraction of the collection. Yet this piece in itself is an exact, accurate plotting of polar constellations. And due to these ancient Chinese people being incapable of such tremendous voyages, not only does the advanced knowledge copied down upon these charts strongly support my posit of them being a rediscovered copied relic of a past civilization's knowledge. These copies were found in the early 1900s in a walled-up cave containing a cache of manuscripts. They were discovered by Chinese Taoist Wang Yuan Lu in a cave system known as the Mo Zhuao Caves. Although the scroll with the star chart was found amongst those documents by Oral Stein when he visited and examined the content of the cave in 1907. One of the first public mentionings of the script in Western studies was from Joseph Needham's 1959 version of the book Science and Civilization in China. Since that time, however, only a few publications have conveniently been devoted to the map, nearly all being Chinese publications. This map, or as we postulate, accurate copy, was made around the year 700. I feel their lack of public exposure and my reasoning for asserting that they were copies of a far more advanced civilization's work is not only due to the Chinese civilization's inability to travel to such locations to plot such charts at the time, but that the whole set of star maps contains over 1,300 stars. Not only proving that, although the Chinese are academically claimed to have believed the world was flat at the time, the star charts prove beyond doubt that they had knowledge of constellations from around the globe. The academic explanation for this is that although the Chinese supposedly presumed the world was flat, they somehow assumed that the heavens were somehow spherical, which to me just seems like a desperate attempt to discredit such manuscripts' true origins. I believe, due to the in-depth and accurate knowledge copied upon the star charts, much of which were far out of the reach of this ancient civilization's observational capabilities, be clear proof that they had discovered maps left by a civilization that was not only seafaring but global. Also, due to the chart featured on Wikipedia, had successfully explored the poles and accurately mapped its constellations. How did the ancient Chinese have such in-depth knowledge of so many constellations, especially polar constellations? We find such manuscripts, academia's funneling of considerable funding into the discrediting of their inexplicable nature and their lack of exposure as highly compelling. Although school curriculums, historical publishings, permitted TV documentaries, and even national museums all conformed to a dreary, limited historical tale in which modern archaeology dictates all. We feel evidence to suggest that a lost civilization once lived, flourished, and built incredible as yet unexplained structures all over our planet is now overwhelming. We have endeavored to explore, unravel, and describe to the world this unimaginably enormous array of impressive, incredibly ancient feats of stone building. By doing so, we feel we have demonstrated that not only is academia severely lacking any explanation or even permitted study of these features, but that this lost civilization, before their mysterious disappearance, were clearly far in advance of our own current architectural, agricultural, and even technological knowledge. And while the world has begun to awaken to the reality of this group's past existence, we have been busy attempting to uncover just what they were building, who they could have been, 
and why they were clearly infatuated with the stars. It should be clear to anyone who has explored these unexplained ancient structures that a common reoccurrence among all is the inclusion of constellations, whether that be within the alignment of said builds or indeed etched into the architecture itself. Why would a clearly highly advanced past civilization have been so obsessed with the stars? If one ponders this question, without the clouded primitive belief-based explanations and motives academia puts forward, it is a question that becomes highly compelling. In Kiori Kancha, Cusco, the golden star disk once rested, once part of a large star map, although funded scholars have seemingly been unable to describe its obvious depictions Many individual researchers have conveniently deciphered this disk with ease. The Golden Star Map, according to an Incan elder, is a map of the sky where their ancestors and Viracocha came from. It has been investigated by academics for over the last 70 years, although this research bared little fruit. Its detail was masterfully produced on one enormous hammered gold sheet and is believed to have been a mere piece of a map once far larger. How did this ancient people know so much about the stars and the universe around us? Why were they so obsessed with stars? Were the Incas visited by beings from space? Perhaps one day we will find out. Hi guys! So many theories have been put forward over the years as to the purpose of the pyramids this being a direct result of the lack of any real evidence for their function. However, what if I were to tell you that the pyramids were a sophisticated protection structure built to house a once-functioning Stargate transport system? A transport system or machine that is still there. I have found substantial Egyptian writings on highly developed knowledge of Earth, the stars, life and death. The Acre Sphinx of the ancient Egyptians was a divine leonine beast having two symmetrical torsos, each with its own head. The two halves of the acre were located on opposite ends of the horizon, one lying to the east and one lying to the west. According to the ancient Egyptians, each breast of the acre contains a portal or gateway leading to what they called an underworld. The sun was believed to pass through the eastern acre gate at sunrise. Then at sunset it would pass through the western acre gate. This would mean that there is another sphinx with the use of remote-controlled robots, red writings of an unknown language have been discovered within hidden tunnel systems beneath the Great Pyramids. These tunnels led to four doors, still with their seals. Interesting to note, the tunnels in which these robots traversed are not big enough to fit a human, yet they are scrawled in an unknown writing. These markings were found in a pyramid that the Egyptologists claim was built by Pharaoh Khufu. Almost immediately after this discovery, Dr. Zahi Hawass, Minister of Antiquities, ordered that a wall be constructed around the pyramid complex, supposedly to protect the pyramids from being damaged by the public. It turns out that these tunnels may lead to the burial chamber of an Egyptian god known as Osiris. It has also been reported by numerous sources that the US military and the CIA have been securing the pyramid complex, along with the Egyptian military. The document on the Egyptian mysteries by the 3rd century teacher Iamblichus describes the ceremony within the secret teachings into the mysteries of Osiris, the science of will. He states that a novice was blindfolded and led through a door in the breast of the Sphinx, through the gate that leads to a fourth place and it may have all been thanks to a deity known as Thoth, who invented writing, medicine, magic and the Egyptian civil and religious practices. And also the thing I believe they are hiding a way of communicating with the supposed dead god Osiris. I suspect this was the creation of a portal. He was said to have been a great magician who knew all that is hidden under the heavenly vault. With the help or teaching of another god Anubis, he also created the first mummification rituals in Egypt. These entities along with Thoth created something that protected the moon and the sun from destruction by the god Set. If I'm correct in my translation, then Osiris, Anubis, Ra, and many others came through a portal, making them either an alien, a god, or dead. Set being a destructive cosmic force, capable of destroying our sun and moon, which Thoth, 
managed to protect us from. The physical remains of Osiris, and I believe others too, which could confirm my hypothesis, have been found and covered up. The tunnels mentioned earlier lead to Osiris's tomb. However, although this discovery is an astonishing one, which could prove Osiris, Set, Ra, etc. to have been real beings, it has been cloaked in secrecy. No photographic evidence of remains exists and a military presence was immediately felt in the area after the find. I now feel I have collected substantial evidence to suspect Egyptian and other authorities around the world are hiding a highly advanced device or structure under the pyramids of Giza and may span the African continent, crisscrossing the ley lines of Earth and the path of the sun with Egyptian secret teachings being openly accessible and telling of portals which were created with the help of gods illustrated as non-human entities, Osiris's tomb being exposed as discovered and shut away from the public. Unknown writings in impossible passageways, it is only a matter of time before what is hidden is exposed. There are some extremely interesting anomalies which can be found on Earth, the most impressive of which undoubtedly found upon the Giza Plateau. Particularly regarding the alignment of the Great Sphinx and the dating this can give us for its possible construction, pertaining to a past alignment with the star constellations Leo, some researchers have concluded that the Sphinx was built over two processions prior to its current date, over 10,000 years ago, a conclusion that has predictably been denied as possibly being accurate by certain bodies of study. However, compelling ancient ruins, pointing to a date of construction far back to this 10,000 plus time period, can in fact be found on an entirely different continent. Discovered carved into the roof of an ancient tomb within Japan, this amazing engraving is actually a star chart. However, due to the claimed age of the tomb, it has been dated to a far more recent time within history than the evidence within the map is illustrating. The roof of the tomb is unusual. Instead of the usual religious illustrations, the ceiling depicted this enigmatic celestial map, complete with 68 constellations painted in gold and three concentric circles drawn in vermilion these displaying the movement of all our system's celestial objects. Funded researchers claim that the ancient star chart was drawn around 65 BC, with the tomb said to have housed the remains of an official or prince of the region. And although academia believes that the star map was made using observations of the celestial heavens, the research which has been done to unravel the map has revealed some startling controversial implications. The star map is actually extremely ancient depicting alignments over 10 millennia older than the date claimed. The obvious question would be, who could have created a map of the heavens so early in history? Why would they want to do so? If they were, like academia states, not actually observing this constellation in real time, and didn't actually create it as a logical form of dating their own tomb, then why draw such a chart? We personally suspect that this star chart is an upart, masquerading as an explained away anomaly. Yet regardless of academic claims regarding the Dunhuang star chart, it is undoubtedly a remarkable item of interest. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. This is a, a great opportunity to see one of the kind of mythical sites of Scottish archaeology. The, the Cockno Stone is one of these sites that people have heard about, there's rumours about it, but very few people remember seeing it when, before it was buried, and so to be part of the revealing of it is really exciting. The Cockno Stone is a large ancient rock located at West Dunbartonshire, Scotland. Measuring 42 feet by 26 feet, it was first discovered in 1887 by the Reverend James Harvey. Such a large stone, once sitting proud upon the surface, inevitably attracted people's attention for thousands of years. The stone features around 90 carved ancient images, considered to be one of the finest sets of ancient petroglyphs in the world. It was reburied in 1965 by archaeologist Ludovic McClellan Mann, who decided to bury the massive slab under several feet of soil to protect it from damage and to prevent people from adding their own modern carvings to it. In 2015, it was partially re-exposed for investigation during a three-day dig and a more complete re-exposure followed a year later. So far, archaeologists cannot agree on what is exactly depicted on the massive slab, yet the images are clearly strange. Often when you discover that specialists cannot come to a joint conclusion, the subject is of a controversial nature. 
There is no consensus among archaeologists on the meaning of the intricate symbols found on its surface. Experts plan to digitally map the stone, and that data obtained could shine more light on its history, its purpose, and the people who created the artwork they believed lived more than 5,000 years ago. Dr. Kenny Brophy led the excavation and described the experience of seeing the stone as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Because of the array of markings on it, the Cockna Stone has been recognized as being of national importance and designated as a scheduled monument. Due to its unusual illustrations and the choice in shapes and placement thereof, many researchers have come to the conclusion that the Cockna Rock could have been some form of star map. The mystery of its strange decorations will undoubtedly persist for many years to come. Peru is undoubtedly a jewel in the crown of ancient sites that can be found all throughout the world. Not only does it contain some of the most astonishing as yet unexplained polygonal masonry to be found anywhere, but it also contains many other anomalous, advanced features built with such precision and prowess, they are still utilized by modern-day man. Irrigation systems still flow with fresh water, as if they were built yesterday, still providing water to the local residents who reside in these mountainous areas. Agricultural technologies, utilized by our more modern ancestors, the Incas, undoubtedly aiding in the flourishing of their culture. It is a place that possesses such advanced features, academia can merely resign themselves to a limited close explanation of such wonders as merely identified as pre-Incan. This without any explanation as to how these ancient groups, who predate those who they have studied in depth, were aware of such advanced, elegant solutions to farming, water sourcing, building, and many other miraculous techniques for survival, among these notoriously inaccessible cliffs throughout the Inca Trail. However, deep within the Andes, far away from the well-worn tourist routes, is possibly one of the most perplexing ancient ruins of them all. Known as Napahuaca, it is a rock-cut ruin that is seemingly placed alone in a place of no initially obvious significance, no indication that it was linked to any existing pre-Incan ruin, yet the precision and indeed obvious effort that went into the creation of this anomalous artifact is undeniable. Carved into the mountainside, strongly reminiscent of false doors, features that can be found among many ancient ruins around the world, that according to numerous ancient legends, were used by spirits to enter and exit the realm of the living. It is intricately designed, features smooth, seemingly laser-cut surfaces, which in regard to its dating is nothing short of astonishing. Found at an altitude of nearly 3,000 feet above sea level, it contains many baffling features, which may indicate why this seemingly inconspicuous location was selected. The ceiling and floor of the cave entrance, for instance, not only appear as if it was hewn with laser-like precision, but were also carved at two precise separate angles, one of 60 degrees and another of 52 degrees. These angles, intriguingly, are also found within the Great Pyramids of Giza at numerous locations. Furthermore, whoever constructed this possible false door somehow picked the only spot upon the mountain that contained traces of a mysterious blue stone. This blue stone, only found within this specific spot, has for many years been utilized within modern technology for its unique characteristic for its piezoelectric properties, a type of crystal capable of generating an electrical charge, used by radio manufacturers for many decades within receivers. The rock chosen for the specific location of the carving is also, intriguingly, magnetic in nature. What's more, if one travels exactly halfway around the world to the UK, the false door aligns perfectly with Stonehenge. Why was this false door created? How was it created with such precision? What tools were utilized by ancient man to achieve these feats of ancient engineering? Why was it placed at this specific location, 
a place that has been discovered to contain mysterious blue crystals with unique electrical properties. Is this false door, like many alternative researchers have postulated, a portal of some kind? Allowing the teleportation of an ancient advanced civilization? We find the location, the precision involved, and indeed, the other intriguing characteristics surrounding this mysterious anomaly highly compelling. False doors are undoubtedly one of the most perplexing mysteries of the ancient world. Found all over the globe, legends regarding these enigmatic doorways, seemingly leading nowhere, actually, once having been active portals of unknown origins, have permeated the many native cultures still found at many of these ancient anomalies. The toppled obelisk of Axum, for example, is not only one of the largest megaliths found on Earth, weighing many thousands of tons, once cut, transported, and subsequently erected within an obelisk field in Ethiopia, is drenched in false doorways. Found in peculiar locations within Peru's mountain ranges, one in particular found within a unique location within a rock face containing a rare element now used to increase radio frequencies. Yet the most intriguing and well-known of these doorways is the Gateway to the Gods, also known as the Midas Monument. Once perfectly carved into one face of a slim outcrop within this ancient site, literally translated as inscribed rock within the Eskashahir province in Turkey. Predictably, any circumstantial evidence that would suggest a date of creation within new or known world history have taken place by the academics tasked with dating the monument and the surrounding relics. The crude inscriptions, which we feel, due to the difference in quality and ability of their creators, we believe dated at a more primitive time, have been used to age the monument to no earlier than the 6th century BC. This inscription, translated as, Attis has dedicated this monument to Midas, Lavactus, and Vanax, being used to date the entire site. Quote, the name Attis, a variant of Attis, is a prominent name in Phrygia, associated with royalty. The fact that the dedication is made to Midas may indicate that he had received posthumous ruler cult. Various indications place the date of the monument's construction in the early to mid-7th century BC. The inscription probably indicates that the monument was erected after the death of Midas in the early 7th century BC. Another inscription on the right side of the monument includes the letter Yod, which was added to the Phrygian alphabet in the mid-6th century BC. End quote. No consideration has apparently been given to the possibility that, like many other as yet unexplained ruins we have shared, may have simply been re-inhabited and subsequently claimed as this people's work, giving a false perception of abilities and power. We find this curious. Who built the Midas monument? Could these false doors have actually once been portals to another place? We find such hypothesis, and indeed the monument itself, highly compelling. We recently covered the enigmatic megalith, known as the White Rock of Vilcambaba within Peru, showing how this rock was in fact abandoned, abandoned midway through being harvested of blocks to be used in the nearby polygonal masonry, with many other sites, many still strewn with blocks cut with a natural appearing face, but a right-angled interlocking body. Yet upon the white rock still remained other mysterious patterns, such as that of the 90-degree steps cut into the stone. We have identified this kind of stone cutting previously, such as at Machu Picchu, clearly used to help construct the polygonal walls themselves, but also at other, until now unexplained, unfinished stones many found throughout Peru. Naupa Iglesia, for example, found just outside the astonishing ancient ruins of Olente Tambo, a mysterious megalith that many, including us, previously presumed was possibly some elaborate deliberate carving, a throne, or possibly, like the false door, meters away, an ancient portal of some form. However, when one approaches said rock with the same eye as that of the white rock, one quickly finds matching stonework, 
finished and installed as that of the water fountain found within Olente Tambo itself, thus further supporting our hypothesis of these types of stone cuts and indeed step patterning found upon them is indicative of unfinished, abruptly abandoned stonework, many left unliberated or strewn among their ancient quarries. As with the many other discoveries made, once one begins to perceive unexplained artifacts of this nature in the correct way, they suddenly make sense, and the supportive evidence simply flows from the hidden into plain sight. How this, or possibly another clearly advanced yet once Stone Age civilization, made the cut marks into the solid pink Aswan granite found upon the unfinished obelisk among many other megalithic blocks found within the Aswan quarry within Egypt, however, is yet another mystery yet to be unraveled. But by identifying and distinguishing between what were enormous megalithic block quarries and what were those of the baffling polygonal blocks is, we believe, the correct path to take if one wishes to unravel the mystery of just how this lost civilization operated, what they were constructing, and hopefully explain who they were and indeed where we came from. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling.